Hi, and welcome to session two on indices. Uh, I hope you have covered the basic idea of what a power is, what an exponent is, what a base is, what do we mean by indices. And in this session, we are going to cover the laws or rules involved with indices, right? So rule number one is, let's say if I have n raised to a into n raised to b, the result is going to be n raised to a plus b. I hope by, know, by now we know what raised to mean or a power means, right? So this is the formula or this is the basic structure. When the base is same, that is n and n are the same and that numbers are getting multiplied with each other, the powers get added is another way of saying it, right? So let's see how can we come to this or how can we derive this if we understand our basics right. So say if I had to do 2 raised to 5 into 2 raised to 3, right? 2 raised to 5 into 2 raised to 3. Don't worry about the separation or gap on the screen. Uh, that is because something is going to happen. But 2 raised to 5 into 2 raised to 3. What do we mean by 2 raised to 5? Right? If I am clear about the basic idea from session 1, 2 raised to 5 means 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 5 times. Right? So there will be 5 2's there. Instead of 2 raised to 5, I can say there are 5 2's being multiplied to each other. And 2 raised to 3 means there are 3 2's being multiplied with each other. Now if I can just count, I can see there are 5 plus 3 uh, 2's. How many 2's are there? There are 8 2's are there, right? So if I want to compress this information in the indices form, in the base and exponent form, I'll collect all the 2's together and I'll put the mark of 8 on top, the index of 8 on top, the sign of 8 on top to indicate there are a total of 8 2's, right? So this is how that law is derived that if you have n raised to a, that means you have n a times, then you have n b times, that means you have a total of n a plus b times, right? Let's try one more example. Say you have 3 raised to 3 into 3 raised to 3. What does it mean? Uh, 3 raised to 3 means there are 3 3's. I know this is going to get confusing a little bit, but there are 3 3's. And the other second 3 raised to 3 means there are 3 3's. So there are a total of 6 3's. So my answer would become 3 raised to 3 plus 3 or 3 raised to 6. Law number 2 or rule number 2 say n raised to a divided by n raised to b is equal to n raised to a minus b. Take your time, try and understand what the structure is. The base is the same again and there are different powers and in when they are being divided, right? the result is going to be a subtraction. We saw when it was getting multiplied, the result was the addition. So you can think of it like that also. In multiplication, it was getting added. In division, it is getting subtracted. We'll see soon how it is working on or why is it getting subtracted. But you should understand the basic idea of division of factors from somewhere else or you should know that idea before proceeding here, right? So let's say we have 2 raised to 5 divided by 2 raised to 3. What does it mean? I have 5 2's in the numerator, 2 into 2 into 2, 5 times. And 2 raised to 3 means I have 3 2's in the denominator, right? Now what is going to happen? We know when we have the same numbers in the numerator and the denominator in our product, we can cancel those numbers out. So I can cancel 3 2's from the bottom denominator and 3 2's from the top. What am I left with? I'm left with 2 2's or 2 raised to 2 or some people also call it 2 square, right? Where did I or how did I get it? I got it as 2 raised to 5 minus 3. I can straight away use the formula. I don't want to think how it is going to happen. So 2 raised to 5 minus 3, I would have got 2 raised to 2. Or I can try and understand what was going on. There were 5 2's on top and 3 2's on bottom. The 3 2's on bottom cancelled the 3 2's on top and 2 2's were left, right? So 2 raised to 5 minus 3. So I hope you getting the idea that if you understand the basics, the you can derive the formula for yourself. You can notice how the formula or the form or the rule or the law has come about, right? Uh, just to get an idea started, uh, let's try one more example and it will also lead to another interesting law or a derivation, whatever you want to call it. So let's say we have 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 3. 
first of all it is the same number right uh, whatever is on numerator is in the denominator so it will cancel itself out and you will get 1 straight away right x by x is 1 10 by 10 is 1 uh, this is basic division uh, you should know this so 10 by 10 or 3 by 3 or 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 3 same number on denominator numerator you always get 1 or open it up 3 raised to 3 means there are 3 3's in the numerator 3 raised to 3 in the denominator means there are 3 3's in the denominator all the 3's get cancelled you get 1 right uh, or according to the formula also you could have got it uh, 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 3 means 3 raised to 3 minus 3 or n raised to a minus b is the form we are using so 3 minus 3 you get 3 raised to 0 so we got the result that I mean obviously we practice it again the, the, the subtraction formula but we also saw that we are getting the result as 1 and the same thing we are getting as 3 raised to 0 so can I also say 3 raised to 0 is 1 right so this is going to be the theme for the next video the idea of raising any number to 0 and getting to 1 and more laws of indices uh, I hope all of this is making sense. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.